Happy Wednesday, kittens. It is April 23rd, 2014, and this is Not a Podcast, episode 66. Welcome, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Amanda, and I am your host. You can find me as Wit on Ravelry, or as Sonia Picky on Plurk, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and on YouTube, as well as you can find the podcast under Not a Podcast on iTunes if you so prefer to watch it that way. The blog and the show notes can all be found at sonitpicky.net. And we have a Ravelry group under Not a Podcast. You will recognize it. It has pink and gold chevrons. And yeah, I think it should be pretty easy to find if you just put that in. So let's see. I am not quite with it today. This is my third attempt at recording. I normally do not have to do this multiple times, but I have been sick the last two weeks. My throat probably still sounds a little bit scratchy, and I may sound like my voice is giving out off and on because I'm trying to control the urge to cough. I have had not a cold, but some sort of a throat virus. And last week at this time, I could not be understood at all. I had a very scratchy, raspy voice. I sounded like I had picked up a two pack a day habit and my energy levels were just too low to record. So I'm hoping things will work out okay today because I miss podcasting. And if you don't keep doing it, you start having weird lulls and breaks and it, um, it becomes really unintuitive to do. So other than that, it has been my children's spring break week this last week, which means we, things were very noisy here. And unfortunately we started it off early with snow (laughs) and icy cold temperatures. And we were not able to do as much as we would have liked or to turn the kids outside as much as we would have liked. So last week was a little bit stressful, but we all survived it and they are back in school today. So yes, we are good to go with the quiet house. Before I get into the knitting content, I was going to ask this question anyway, but Christina started a thread over in the group wanting to know, would you all like to do another knit along this summer? I have been thinking it's about time. I know that most other podcasters seem to constantly have knit-alongs going, and so I tend to not want to um, add to that because there's just, it seems like everybody does. And um, I really enjoyed doing Socket to Summer last summer, which if you were around at that time, you would know was for three months from first day of June until the last day of, I think, August. We just had an open contest where you knit as many full pairs of socks as you could and you were entered for prizes and they were all small things that a lot of people knit during the summer anyway. So I was wanting to know if any of you are interested in possibly socking it to summer again, if you would maybe like to do some other kind of a knit along or craft along, or if you're not interested at all. If you go into the thread, I think it's called summer knit along. The second post is by me and I have a poll in there where you can check off saying with several options letting me know whether or not you'd be interested because if there's enough interest I will host again and more than gladly and I can definitely start working on prizes and yeah, getting that sorted and getting it going. So two weeks is a long time and I've had a chance to finish a couple of projects up. So first up we will do finished objects and as you all knew if you've been watching the last couple of shows. I have been working on my April personal sock club socks, which this month was two pairs of children's socks, theoretically for my son and for my daughter, but realistically they're both probably going to be for my daughter, out of Knit Picks Felici in two different colorways. And now I have finished both pairs. The first one is Knit Picks Felici in the Building Blocks colorway, which last time I mentioned to you is very dirty. You can kind of see, especially in these white sections and the yellow section, that there's a lot of color transfer on these. But overall, they are very cute. They just barely fit my son now with some finagling, and if we stretch them, we can get them on, but they're very short on him because he has huge feet. And I knit the second pair to be the exact same size because it turns out they're an excellent size for my daughter who has very average sized feet for her age. And hers is in, I think, the sugared violets colorway. Yeah, they're very, just about the same mommy yarn. Um, 
same size, same numbers used. Um, I had a little bit more of this one and I didn't go quite far enough. And this one I had a little bit less and I used all but I think a half a yard maybe. I was really cutting it close. So these ones I used up every single little bit. And with my sons, I could have gotten away with doing on this first sock, I'm guessing I could have knit another quarter of an inch and then these would have been matching as well. But you know, overall, they're good. I knit these with US size ones. I used Knit Pro Carbons, which are not my favorite needles. And after this pair, I think I'm going to destash the ones that I have. The yarn kept catching on the ridges on the end of them. And I don't mind the tips and I like them mostly, but I'm not a fan of the cable and I'm definitely not a fan of the join. And when you magic loop socks like I do, that cable and that join are very, very important. They have to be smooth like butter or else they make things very hard. And this second pair of socks, especially those ones caught so badly. And they, I had to really fight with them to get them off over the join every time, which made them take longer. And instead of having second sock syndrome, I had fourth sock syndrome. I had to take several days off before I could even finish them because I was just so irritated with the joins. And I don't think I have any other... Hmm. And I don't think I have any other similar needles in a size one right now. So I'll definitely be looking to replace those with maybe some sock rockets or at the very least some chow goos or some Haya Haya sharps because I like all of those just about the same. The other project I finished was one I had just shown you last week. And when I did, I was this far. I left a little thing in to show you. This is Trillion by Martina Bem. It is part of her Hitchhiker series, which is based off of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which if you have not read those books, they are hysterical. You should. They are by Terry Pratchett. And I managed to finish last night, but not block, my Trillion shawl. You can see it's nice and long. I used all but about, I'd say, hmm, yard or so of this yarn. Not enough that I could have gotten another two row repeat in. Trillion features a border with, oh goodness, <sighs> futzing around here, um, features a border with a bunch of eyelets. I did my lace wrong on my edge. I discovered that I was not reading that closely, but it still looks okay. It will pass for the time being. Tala. Mm -mm. that goes all the way around the shawl including the corner here can't really see it yet hopefully next week this will be fully blocked and I will show it off then I used another crafty girl strong sock for this which be it's incredibly squishy I am really pleased with this base it's soft and squishy and it's nice and this was in the Swedish Chef colorway, which is now known as Bork Bork Bork. <laughs> Good name for it. And as you can see, it did pool. I started pooling a lot sooner than I thought I would. I had one flash there. And then I pooled again a little bit over here. And then I had a big pooling right in there. But then other than that, it stayed pretty nicely variegated throughout. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm looking forward to seeing it blocked and fully open. And yeah, the her patterns, even with slightly lower yardage skeins, like another Crafty Girl, another standard American skeins, still gives you a pretty good sized neck scarf. That The shape works much better for me than with other ones. But as you can see, it gets around and it wraps and it's good. I have a problem wearing straight triangle, sh triangle shawls or half moon half circle shawls they tend to not be long enough I like my shawls longer and a little bit less wide and these kinds of patterns work out really well for that so I'm a big fan of Martina Ben patterns they're super easy I would definitely recommend them so let's see I knit this for both uh, Kate over at Stitch Addiction is doing a shawl knit along right now I knit this for that as well as if you follow the stash less podcast she is doing a friendly knit along race along with I think the Den Knits podcast, maybe, possibly. 
and they are doing a knit-along race-along to see who can complete the most projects from a designer of their choice in a one-month period of time. So Stash Lush group is doing Martina Bem patterns and the other group is doing Patricia Martin patterns. So once this is blocked and I take pictures, I will be adding one to Team Stash Less. I spent most of my vacation focusing on those two projects because I really wanted to get stuff done because I want to work on new projects so badly, but I can't focus on more than two, maybe three projects at a time. I'm just, I'm not able to do it. I tend to be very all into one thing or all into another. I can't really be doing a bunch of things at the same time. So I have only one other work in progress to show you today. You may have seen this on my Instagram. I have been working on my stripy scrappy garter blanket and you saw it last week and the week before. It was that very thin strip I was doing that was the second strip. And since then I have finished the strip and I have seamed it using mattress seaming to the first piece. And so far, I'm so happy with how this is turning out. Um, mattress seaming on garter stitch is amazing. Absolutely amazing. But as you can see, I've got a very nice thing going here. Strip number two was knit mostly with um, Knit Picks palette held double, and it was the, I think, Marble Heather colorway. I put a little bit of the Barocco Vintage in fondant from my daughter's blanket in here. And then I finished off with a little bit of that yarn I had kettle dyed and used for my Prisen held double at the bottom. And it's such a squishy, awesome blanket right now. It's less of a blanket and more of like a very big wrap. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, about the size of a wrap. I could get it around me. I'm looking forward to doing another strip in the future, but for the time being, I think if I'm going to work on another blanket in the next month, I will likely do the next block on my daughter's um, modern log cabin blanket rather than this one. This one is for using my scraps. And I need to make some more scraps first before I try to do the next set. I don't want to use too much of the same colors because it's kind of it's a crazy quilt type of blanket. I think I'm going to back up just a little bit and I'm going to try to edit out all the screeching and other things and show you guys kind of what it looks like when it's big and you can see it all. As you can see, first strip was lots of colors, but shorter color stripe repeats and lots of uh, alternating them in. And the second strip was very thin with longer color repeats, but I think it works out really well. The original blanket that I'm basing this off of did very similar things. And while I'm not copying exactly, I am mimicking some of her ideas because I really liked them. And that's all that I worked on project wise. I did not cross stitch this, these last two weeks again. And I did not do any sewing. However, I did do a lot of spinning. So we'll go into spinning a yarn. So let's see. I have found, like a lot of people, sorry, I'm going to mess with my hair for a second, that knitting is a very soothing and calming activity. It helps me think more clearly. It helps me relieve my stress levels. And it's just it's all around. It's an awesome thing. Knitting is magical. However, even more magical than knitting is spinning. <laughs> spinning is just this incredibly, I hate to sound, use the words like this, but zen, very meditative activity to do that helps me really focus and calm. And right now, stuff in my personal life is very stressful. I don't talk about it too much, and until we know more of what's going to happen, I don't want to talk about it a lot. But things with my husband's job are not so good right now. If you follow the news and you know about the new Department of Defense budget and about certain airframes that may have been cut from aviation, that's us. <laughs> so we're not um, entirely sure what's going to be happening in the next 18 to 24 months of our life. But yeah, things are just a little bit stressful. So I spun like a crazy person this week. So first up, last week I was showing you 
some two of by hand pull worth in the periwinkle colorway that I had spun singles. I think I had gotten through one half and I was getting ready to do or had started the second half. So finished. <laughs> Bam. It's a two ply as most of my yarns have been lately because I've been practicing getting doing two plies. And overall it is pretty consistent. Sorry, I'm just trying so hard not to cough. You can see little spots in here like right there where the green is and occasionally there's little blips of orange but mostly it's tons and tons of beautiful purples and it's squishy I did pretty good it's pretty squishy this one is just about the same weight as the last one I had shown you in the previous show I think there is approximately 266 yards in here and it is just under four ounces one of my plies was quite a bit thinner than the other, so I had some leftovers. And what I like to do when I have leftovers from spins, and I was going to bring it over here and I forgot, I keep toilet paper rolls. And when I have just a little bit of something left, I wind it off onto a toilet paper roll and I hold on to them. And I had gotten to the point where I had been spinning long enough that I had a bunch of little random bits and pieces of different spins left over. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to start making mini skeins because I can't keep collecting them. So I looked at it and I had what looked like just about the right amount of some spun right round pull worth in glow sticks left and I made a mini skein. So I don't know if it's going to want to focus but glow sticks is bright green, icy blue and kind of a mushroomy taupe color. And periwinkle is a ton of purple, so it's just, it's very pretty. I think this one, at my guesstimations, is like around 20 yards. Not too big. But there ended up being a little bit of the periwinkle left. And I looked, and I had a little bit of, if you remember from like two, three shows ago, the Fluff Fibers Bad Romance. I had just enough to make this itty bitty skein with that. And then I, after that point, I used, had used both of these up. But Bad Romance was pinks and blues and purples and browns and it went really really well and played very nicely with the periwinkle and at most I think this one I guess there's about 10 yards maybe eight something like that not much just little tiny bits so after I was done with those I thought oh I want to spin some more Polworth because Polworth is my fiber sorry that is the dog going crazy Tala I no, no, you stay away from that. You go someplace else. Polworth is the fiber that I spin when I'm practicing drafting. It's very comfortable for me. It's got just enough grip to it that it's easy for me to do, but it's still soft enough that it's really enjoyable. So I was like, oh, I want to spin some more Polworth. So I pulled out what I thought was some more Polworth. See, we're already getting into a story here. And as I tried to spin it, it was just pulling apart, and I was having so many problems with it, couldn't figure out why. Well, that's because I was spinning Three Waters Farm super fine merino top in blossom pink. Merino is nothing at all like Polworth. I think someone sees a squirrel or possibly a deer outside. We live in an area with a lot of wildlife and she gets a little bit crazy. We're going to try to talk through it though and hopefully she will just calm down on her own. If not, I'll have to stop and deal with her. So. <clears throat> I decided to try to spin the merino anyway. It ended up being very thick and thin and very bloppy, but I came out with this two ply. It is quite a bit thicker than the last one, at about twice as thick. It's definitely a chunky, if not heading into a bulky weight. You can see there's lots of spots where it's underspun because, try as I might, I could not get this to be under control for very long into drafted. I didn't do anything special with it. I'm going to try with my next merino doing some full logs and seeing if that helps me control the um, the drafting and the thickness very much. But it's still, it's very pretty. Blossom pink is everything from slightly fuchsia-ish colors to an orangey peachy color. It's very pretty. And this one is super, super squishy. I was hating it a little bit until I gave it a soak, and now I'm just, oh, 
so squishy, even with worsted short draw style drafting like I do. It's just, oh. so then that one had yardage left over of the, one of my singles. So I thought, okay, what can I do with it? So two of by hand pull worth fluorescent rainbow. I made a mini skein with that. So a one strand is pink. All the other ones are these rainbow colors. Worked out pretty well. Still had more. So then I took some of my spindle spun slightly thicker leftovers. And we have some spun right round pull worth in licorice with it. Did very well. Very peachy pink. All of these are very Eastery. I thought about it and I'm like, oh, I should have tried to, if I'd done this sooner, I could have tried to make like little bunny nuggets or other things. And I still had more. So then I did some more spun right round Polworth. And this is glow sticks again, like the last one. So it's the greens and the blues and mushroomy topes with a slightly more muted, rosy, dusty rose pink. So I got all those out of it. And by then I finally was done. But I still wasn't done spinning and I wanted to go back to Polworth. So I still had some leftovers from a spin I did mid last year of more spun right round, more Polworth in the Lady Thunder colorway. And this time I put it into full logs and I focused on drafting it thin and consistent. And this was about two and a half ounces and I think I did a pretty good job. Lady Thunder is two shades of gray and purple. She's very pretty. I tried to pretty evenly distribute the colors of the full logs between the two plies. I did okay. And yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. This is approximately heavy fingering like sport weight, which is what I was hoping for. I was trying to find something that I could theoretically knit socks with sometime. Still very squishy goes in very nice. And overall, this one is really consistent compared to my last ones. I'm super, super happy with that. Still thick and thin, but nowhere near as bad. And yeah, that was the last thing I spun on my wheel this week. I have still been working on my spun right round BFL and love bug on my micro Trindle XL from Trindleman over on Etsy. These are my favorite spindles, by the way. Eventually, when I get more spindles, I'll do spindle reviews. But these two are my most used ones. They're both trindles, micro trindle XL, and then a normal trindle. And they spin incredibly fast in amazingly thin singles, as you've been seeing. And I didn't get as much work done on this one as I would have liked. My, my ball of singles is considerably heavier. There's like three times as much here as I was two weeks ago. And I'm still hoping to maybe work through it before the end of this month so that in May I can ply it. I'm doing a three ply sock yarn and maybe I can actually have a couple sock yarns sitting around and start knitting hand spun socks for the fall. So overall, super happy. I'm not sure if I would spin another sock weight yarn on my spindles. It works really well for consistency and the thinness that I want, but I started this spin back on I think December 11th. <laughs> it's been a very long time coming and it just it's very slow and I love spindle spinning but at the same time I like having an end product too and let's see January, February, March, April. Yeah four going into five months now spinning is a very very long time. So we shall see what I have to show you next week on that. So that almost wraps us up for the week kittens. Um, it's been a long time, but I focused and I do have just a little, little bit of stash enhancement for you. So last time I talked to you, I said I was going to the central New York fiber frolic in Baldwinsville, New York the following Saturday, which I did. But Friday, right after I recorded, my daughter remembered that I had told her about a birthday party for a friend of hers the same day at overlapping times and I thought she was going to get to go. Logistics did not allow for this. Um, my husband has a car, we both each have a car, but his car is 
a manual, and mine is an automatic, and I cannot drive a manual at all. I've never learned. And originally, we were going to swap out the seats and do all this stuff, but it just came down to it that I forgot to RSVP for the party. I didn't have a present for her friend, and I decided we were going to go to the Fiberfest, and I thought she'd forget about it. Friday morning, she remembers. And upon hearing she was not going to her party, she proceeded to cry and be very, very upset. So I promised her that if we went to the Fiberfest, she could pick out her own fiber, and I would spin her yarn for a toy out of it. So, Fiber Frolic, I got a lot of swag. It was a very cute little fiber festival, smaller than I was expecting, but it was at the, I think, the Beaver Lake or the Beaver Creek Nature Center. It was very cute. There were spinners doing demonstrations. There was a story weaving loom thing they were doing where everyone could come up and weave in parts, and at the end of the day, they were going to raffle it off. There was a, uh, a decent-sized room with a bunch of vendors in it. I did not get to see the whole room because my children did not want to stay around quite that long, but we did make it around once and see the perimeter and all of the fiber dyers. And one of the first places I stopped was Stone Edge Fibers, who are based out of Phelps, New York, and they have an email address, so I assume they have a website, but I can check that and put it in the show notes. And I bought this lovely bag of hand-dyed comb top, which is 60% caramel wool and 40% alpaca. And it says it's very fine and soft in four ounces. I will open it up in just a second here. But it, I showed it to my mother, and the first thing she said was it reminded her of cotton candy, which it kind of does. I forgot to open this one. But it's very soft and very pretty. And it's, it's a comb top. Not quite a pencil rolling, but it's a beautiful aquamarine music. Slightly minty green, pretty, pretty stuff. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I tried when I was at the Fiber Festival to pick up mostly new to me fibers because I haven't spun a, stuff, a ton of stuff yet. I've been spinning for almost exactly a year now, and I haven't gone too far beyond BFL and Polworth, and now I've done some merino. I've done merino before on my spindle. And I've done a little bit of Targhee, and I've done Corydale, but I don't think I've done anything else. So the next big stop we made, and where I tried to steer my daughter because of her color choices, was I went to go see Renee and spun right around at their booth. And we bought a lot of stuff at that booth. It was hard. I wanted to buy everything. <laughs> and it took me a while to make up my mind. But first, we'll show you what my daughter picked out. She picked out some Merino in the candy store colorway and when you buy from Renee you get everything in these nice little drawstring bags and candy store is this really really bright colorway with some deeper more vibrant colors but the plan for this is to spin it thin enough that hopefully when I I want to chain ply it so I wanted to break this maybe in half and have a couple sections of long color repeats is to chain ply it and get roughly a decayed worsted weight. Since this is going to be a toy, sorry, a little bit of crinkling, and she specifically wants a cat, that is the plan. I also then promised my son that if I was doing that for my daughter that he could also pick out some fiber. And he ended up picking out some Polworth in the bones colorway which is a colorway I've been wanting to try for a very, very long time. And it's beautiful, and it actually reminds me of my dog. I've been debating calling the dog over and showing the fiber with her because it looks so much like her. Maybe towards the end of the show I'll do it, and then I'll splice it in so you guys can all see. And then, because I'm going to a fiber fest, of course I'm going to get some stuff for me. I got another colorway I've been coveting for a long time. One of her new-ish colorways, which is called Feather, on new to me base Falkland. And Feather is oh, gorgeous. It is teal and this kind of mulberry plummy color. It's <clears throat> greens and grays and kind of a goldish bronze brown. So pretty. 
I've been wanting to see how Falkland spins up and whether or not it would be appropriate for socks. And one more thing at her booth. I was happy to see that she also had her bats there. I have been eyeing all of her bats over on Instagram. And if you don't follow her on Instagram, you should. There's lots of beautiful stuff to look at. She has been doing some of these sparkle bats. And this one is Merino, Super Fine Merino, Faux Cashmere, Sparkle, and Corydale. And it's about two ounces. And the colorway is called Glee. We got the business card for in case you guys want to see that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Glee is gold, purple, and a whitish gray. I'm really looking forward to spinning this up. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it as it's going to be only two ounces, but I'm thinking maybe a stuffy or something else small to hang out on my shelf would be appropriate for it. From there, I made one more stop before we went home because at this point my kids were complaining. They wanted to go play outside. They didn't want to be in the room anymore. So I didn't get to check out any of the woodworkers. I didn't get to check out anything else, but we did check out Fat Cat Knits, who is also on Etsy and they have their own website. And they are based out of Illion, New York. And I've been wanting to try Fat Cat for a while. The booth was pretty small, and unfortunately, unlike every other vendor there, at least the ones I visited, Fat Cat did not take credit cards. So I was not able to buy as much stuff as I would have liked to. I would have purchased a couple more things had I had the money. But luckily, I had pulled a little bit of cash, so I got to get something. So I decided to try out another bat. And this one says it has BFL, Merino, Corydale, Silk Noils, Milk Fiber, Silk, Fire Star, and Hemp in it, and is approximately, I think, 3.8 ounces. Got that list of all the different things that can be in there. And it is, oh, it's beautiful. It is purples and peach, lilac, fuchsia, and all this pretty golden sparkle that you can see coming off there. And it's so soft, so incredibly soft. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I'm thinking something soft if I can put it near my neck. Or, I don't know, if there had been more of this, and if it spins up well, I would be tempted to try a sweater out of something that's pretty good. You can see there's like some shocking hot pink in there, and oh, so pretty. Tiniest little hint of some green is hiding out. A little bit of orange. It's good stuff. Overall, I was really happy with my experience at the Fiber Festival. And if we are still in this area next year, which we should be, especially given the um, cancellation of the airframe, I should theoretically still be here for it. And I definitely want to go again next year because it was a lot of fun. And I'd like to become one of those people who most of my stashing ends up happening at Fiber Fests and places where I can actually see it in person and buy from there. So other than that, I still have something else. My Moon Rover... April 2014 Fiber Club colorway also came. And she always includes a little sachet with a little bit of um, lavender in it. And mind the ripping. This month's colorway, which she does, she's very generous. She does five ounce braids instead of just four. And it's an 8515 Merino nylon blend, is this. <clears throat> Lacey has the most amazing color sense. Like, I, I say this about all my favorite dyers. My favorite dyers are definitely Moon Rover, Spun Right Round, and Hello Yarn. Just all three of them, they're so unique, and they all have such great color sense. But Lacey throws together these crazy colors, <laughs> which you don't, I don't see a lot of other people doing. She just kind of goes for it, and I like that a lot. She goes for slightly ugly colors and very vibrant colors. She's a big fan of this blue. She does a lot of teal, which is not quite reading. Like you can see the green, it transitions into a very deep teal. There's coffee brown in here. There's some gray and yellow and short. This is actually more chartreuse. Chartreuse and yellow and apricot. She loves to use apricot. It's just, it's beautiful. And I think a lot of her colorways, while pretty, 
can also read as somewhat masculine because of the types of colors she's using. She uses very bold colors and they're very um, primary, like these blues and things are very primary. And so I think they could work very well for boys and it's like there's a brick red in this one and oh, so much fun. I am looking forward to getting better at spinning merino so that I can justify breaking into these and trying to do two ply if not three ply socks out of them. And I think when I do, I'm going to try to keep the colors together as much as possible. But you never know, maybe I'll just let a barber, barber pull like crazy too because I think these could make some incredibly awesome speckly socks. And that is the show for today, kittens. I think that for next week, theoretically, I will be spinning some more Polworth. This time some Pigeon Roof Studios because I'm working through some older things in my stash so I can make room for all the new things you just saw me put in here. And to get practice, which just happens to be organic Polworth in the dragon fruit colorway. You will see it more next week. I don't know, maybe I'll open it up because if I spin as fast as I have, then you might not get to see it in its fiber state. just vibrant pinks and greens and Pigeon Roof does these incredibly speckled braids. There's just there's really no way to I think um, keep the colorways together. I had done a little bit of merino last year on my spindle that I had um, chain plied and even chain plying it there's just no colors really to maintain. It'll keep similar-ish colors together, but it still doesn't really, I don't think it'll stripe. Although that maybe that's something I should do. Maybe I should knit up my other stuff and see what happens. And I'm also planning, sorry, crinkling still. Bad podcaster. I am planning to participate in the quarter two challenge for Eat Sleep Knits teams. I am on Team Octo Pearls. And I have a now two-year-old skein of Yarn Love, Marion Dashwood in the Valentine colorway that I've been meaning to use. And I bought some Jenna Cooper patterns, Retro Lemon Studios. Um, Nicole the Notorious Octopus, I think is calling my name. And I might be able to bang out for sure one, maybe two out of this. I'm thinking about maybe starting a toy. I will be working on my own personal hand dye socks. I have been working on those, but the Five rounds here, five rounds there isn't really exciting to show, so I'm going to wait until I get a little bit farther along to show those off. And, hmm, I'm thinking I might take a break from the blankets, and I might finally start a sweater knit. That might be asking a little much. And I want to actually cross-stitch this week and spin and maybe try to unbury my sewing machine now that I can put all this fiber away because I finally told you about it. I should be pretty busy, so hopefully I will have a lot to talk to you about next week. I hope you all have been staying healthy and that the weather is warming up where you all are, or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, hopefully you're cooling down but not so cool yet that you're freezing. Have a lovely day, kittens. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.